Hey, what's up, guys? All right, so we got a nice big map of the Clover Kingdom to start off this week's chapter. And this map basically just shows the basically pinpoint or even just show off the entire journey as it's been on on his way to the capital. Because, I mean, it starts off with pinpointing, you know, Hage Village where he ended up fighting up against that random uh, Purple Orca member. Then it goes to basically all the other fights that he's been through all the way up to where he actually teleported with the rest of the Black Bulls and Rise and them at the end of the last week's chapter just outside the capital. So yeah, this map basically just shows you exactly how far he's gone from Hage Village to the capital. And in a way, basically showing us exactly how far away it actually is. Now, one thing that did confuse me while looking at the map, you could see basically Yuno's journey as well after they left Hage Village. And it seems like he's going away from the capital instead of heading towards it. Because if you look at the map, it would have been easier for him to just head straight up to the capital from Hage Village. Just literally go straight. Sure, he would have ran into that one village on, along the way. But it still would have got him there a lot faster instead of, you know, going off to the right. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what Yuno's actual plan is here. Anyway, after that, which... Anyway, after we see that little map, we actually go back in time to right after the reincarnation magic was actually activated. And we find out that basically, because we check back in with Yami, like literally after the reincarnation magic was activated, we still see him standing over there next to Julius' dead body. And then he sees the lights from the reincarnation magic go into the capital castle. And it just basically turns both Marks and Owen into elves. And they basically just kill off two of the barrier keepers before... After that, we actually head right back in time to actually check in with Yami right before the reincarnation magic was activated. And we see he's still there, you know, he's still mourning over Julius' dead body. And when he sees the light from the reincarnation magic actually head into the si inside the castle. And it ends up hitting both Marx and Owen. Now, you probably know who Marx is. You should know who Marx is. We, You know, he's basically, do it. he was Julius' assistant. You know, we saw him plenty of times. But if you don't know who Owen is, I don't blame you. We only really saw him like a few times throughout the entire series. Owen was basically that doctor, if you remember back when Asta's arms were both cursed and he couldn't use them. He was the doctor that Yami actually took Asta to in order to fix them when he told him basically, you know, there's a curse on him. There's nothing he could do for him. So yeah, that's who Owen is. And basically the two of them get turned to elves. They kill off some of the ma some of the mages who are basically there to keep a barrier up around the Cobra Kingdom capital. And they go on the attack basically trying to kill Yami. So while they're attacking Yami, they're both covered in this giant slime ball thing that Owen actually creates. And dude, it... Honestly, I have not been more creeped out by something from this series since that whole like slime monster thing from back when the children were being kidnapped during that one arc when we actually saw Yami go up against uh, Patrick for the first time. Like seriously, this thing had more tentacles than the tentacle monster from Star Wars World 1 and that thing creeped me the fuck out the first time I saw it. Anyway, I'm actually surprised because both Marks and Owen don't really have offensive type magic, but they actually did manage to keep Yami on ropes for about like half of this chapter. For the most part, he was actually on the defensive. And then they noticed Joyce's dead body just laying there. And they made the mistake. They made the rookie mistake of dreading to cut up Joyce's body in front of, right in front of Yami. And that's when Yami activated his King's Hockey and basically just wiped the floor with both of them. I mean, he was literally so fast that the two of them could not see him. He knocked them out without any trouble whatsoever, which has me thinking he actually was holding back the entire time. And even, he was even holding back when he knocked him out because he actually knocked him out without even doing any damage to them. He hit them with the back of his sword. So yeah, the two of them are down for the count. He's ready to, you know, move on and figure out exactly what's going on and even get revenge on Patrick for basically what he did to uh, Julius. And then we get the big reveal, which wasn't really that big of a reveal to me. But we get the big reveal that Charlotte, the head of the Blue Roses, is actually now an elf. And she actually comes to the rescue of both Marks and Owen and is here to basically face off against Yami. Now, the reason why I said this wasn't such a big reveal to me is because of the fact that, alright, like a few months ago, there actually was a release of a Black Clover official guidebook. And in that guidebook, it actually showed exactly all the main important characters who actually would be turned to elves during this arc. And right there on the list was Charlotte. So, I had actually got that spoiled to me because of that guidebook. Now, I don't actually own the guidebook. I actually heard about it online. I had looked it up. And I saw the image of it right there. I didn't know that, you know, it showed off the elves. I just thought it showed off, you know, gave us be more backstory about, you know, the Clover Kingdom. Maybe some of the other kingdoms surrounding it, like the Diamond Kingdom. It gave us all that, but it also spoiled the elf reveal. So, 
I kind of I kind of fucked myself over with that one. But yeah, Charlotte's there to take on Yami now, and he's basically going to have to pull out all the stops. There's no way it like Charlotte was extremely strong before the elf before the elves took over body. And now that we know that the elves basically you know enhance their you know host body's magic or their mana by like tenfold, he's going to have to basically pull out every move he has in order to survive this fight, let alone just win it. But uh, yeah, it's pretty much it for the chapter. Now, I'm a little bit disappointed and excited at the same time when it comes to, you know, what happened at the end of this week's chapter and what's going to happen in next week's chapter with Charlotte and Yami facing off. I'm excited because of the fact that, you know, this is actually the fight I was most hyped for when it came to the elves versus humans. I was looking forward to seeing Charlotte and uh, Yami facing off against each other because they'd be two strong mages going all out against each other. And on top of that, we'd finally get to see, at least I was hoping we get to see, finally an elf or a human actually regain their body from the elf without the use of uh, as a sword basically just a human fully taking control back of their body because of how for what how much feelings they have for the other for the human they're fighting against i'm disappointed though because like i said this was actually the, the fight i was most hyped for and because of that i wanted to see it happen last i wanted it to be the last one we actually get out of all the humans versus elves fights but it's here now it's going to be like a third one and it's a little disappointing because we haven't really had that many important ones up to this point up until this point, the only main character we actually had as an elf that we actually fought and turned back into a human was Luck. I mean, yeah, there was Yuno on top of that, but Yuno's elf wasn't fully aware of himself inside his body, so it wasn't hard for Yuno to take control back of his body. There was no real fight there. Luck was the only one we actually had a struggle with, and I'm a little disappointed that, you know, the one I was most hyped for is actually the second one out of all the important characters, instead of being further down. I, like, I would have rather see, like, Gouch and his sister Mary, basically seeing the two of them, and seeing how we turn them back into humans before we actually get to see this fight. But despite how disappointed I actually am to see the two of them actually fighting off this early on in the arc, I am actually hyped to see exactly what ends up happening because, like I said, two extremely powerful mages, especially one that is now turned into an elf, going at each other at full force. I cannot wait to see exactly what happens with this. And uh, that's pretty much it for the chapter. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, drop me a like, subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Comment down below with your thoughts on the chapter and how you feel about, you know, Yami and Charlie going at each other. Do you think that, you know, that Charlotte's love for Yami will be enough to turn her back into a human? Or do you think Asto had to come in and actually save Yami again, just like he's done for pretty much every other human who's been turned to an elf? Uh, let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think. But uh, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.